Welcome into episode number seven of the Ryan and Megan podcast. We are Ryan and Megan, two traveling physical therapists who have been traveling since 2020. And now we're a little bit unique in a sense that we travel as a family with our two young daughters. So what we're going over today is we're going to answer the question, is RVing still worth it for you travel therapists out there? So let's hop into it. Now, before we hop into our main topic, if you could, please go over and give us a five-star review on wherever you're listening to this podcast. That just helps us get our podcast promoted so we can help more people enter this awesome travel lifestyle. All right, so today we are talking about is RVing still worth it for travel therapists and travel nurses if you're watching our channel. Now, Megan and I have traveled in an RV. We've traveled where we've rented rooms, we've rented apartments, we've rented whole homes before. So we've kind of done it all on the housing option you know, front. Yep. We've had our fair share of experiences in the different types of housing dealios. So we like to think we kind of have figured out a little bit what we like and uh, what we think is is maybe a good way to go if you're a traveler. Right, because if you are going to be traveling, you're going to need to stay somewhere, right? You're not back at your home. And so there's only really a few options for you. One is you can rent a room. And when we say rent a room, this means you literally just rent a room in someone's house. Whether that's you find that on Furnished Finder, sometimes Airbnb, Mm -hmm. Um, mostly Furnished Finder is where we would look for that. But you would rent a room. That's kind of your own private space. And then they allow you to use their kitchen and more of the common spaces. Yes, sometimes. You (laughs) You gotta look at the listing on there. But renting a room is an option and a lot of solo travelers rent a room because they don't need too much. You're not home that often. You are going to be working. You are going to be exploring. And so they just rent a room. The next kind of tier up would be renting a house. Yeah. Or renting just an entire space. And that can come in multiple different forms. Do you want to go over that? Yeah, that could be like um, renting a house, renting uh, an apartment, renting like you know, just a private space with a kitchenette and a bedroom and a bathroom. Um, you can still do this through Furnished Finder, Airbnb. Those are pretty common ones. And then you can also look at um, apartment rentals. They're just kind of harder to get them furnished, harder to get the right contract, right, right I, rental length for your contract. I think a majority of people are used to renting an apartment because you went to college, you probably stayed in an apartment off campus. And when you rent an apartment like that, most of the time, the shortest term they would give you is maybe six months. And that would be if you're lucky. Most of the time, they want you in for a full year contract on on an apartment lease. And with a traveler, you're only going to be there for 13 weeks. So that does not work out. And if you do find some short term where they do accommodate like, okay, a three-month lease, a lot of times the prices are really high. Mm -hmm. So you want to look at Furnished Finder. You want to look at Airbnb. You can also look at hotels. Yep, extended stay hotels. But a majority of the time, you're going to be either renting a small apartment, either um, kind of like what we have here in our home. So we live on the main floor, and then our basement we have transformed into a small apartment. So we have a kitchenette down there. We have a full bedroom. We have a bathroom um, and, and a living room, living space. And we actually rent that out to travel nurses, travel therapists. Um, so it might be something like that where you have your own space, you can cook, you can live. Yeah. Or, you know, like Megan said, you can rent a whole home, which that's what we did the past two contracts because we had Reagan with us. We had a babysitter, our family member with us, and we needed the bigger space. So there's tons of options. The other option, Mm -hmm. which we're discussing today, is RVing. And a lot of people look into RVing when they go to travel. Yes. We um, lived in an RV for about a year to a year and a half that we renovated ourselves. And this was before we had any children. And we really loved the experience. And we're going to kind of talk about today. I'm not sure. I think we've got a couple other things we want to cover before we hit on it. But we're going to kind of talk about like, looking back. Now we have ourselves in the future, looking back to our past selves. 
would we have done the same thing or would we advise ourselves to do the same thing now? So that's going to be kind of interesting um, because it ended up working out for us really well. You know, the Very RV well. worked. Um, we didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, you know, we we bought something that we could afford at the time. And, um, and then we ended up making a little bit of money on it. So it worked out for us, but, you know. Yeah. And RVing, RVing is definitely not something you have to do to travel. There's no. many different options. Like I said, we went over a lot of those. But when we entered into travel, we really wanted to do the RV lifestyle. That was um, something we were watching on YouTube. We were watching people renovate RVs. And so that was something outside of, is it the most financially savvy thing to do that we just wanted to be a part of and we wanted to experience. We wanted to live full time in an RV. And so we did that for about a year, year and a half um, for a few contracts. And we really enjoyed it. And it has always left a lasting memory in our mind because then when we went to other rentals, there was always something missing. And that for us, that was, you know, we missed staying in an RV, our own space. Well, we do have a lot of people who ask, you know, what should I buy for an RV? Or do I have to RV if I travel? And there's really a lot of different um, nuances to it to consider for your own situation if RVing is right. So I think that's some of the things that we're going to kind of cover today. One of the ways that it's very different today than it was back when we got RV is just the cost of living and inflation is high interest rates on things. I don't know if interest rates on like brand new RVs is also high, but it you is. know, the whole economy is just different. Yes, so. it's all very different. So to finance an RV, to finance a tow vehicle, that's the other thing. You can get you an RV, but you got to have something that can tow it. So all those interest rates are up. But then also, in general, the cost of housing is up. We used to be able to you know, rent a room for a certain price, but now that's way higher um, just because the cost of living keeps going up. And depending on where you're traveling to, the cost of living can be dramatically different. And that's what what we found out. And and right now it's even dramatically different. So even though I would say RV costs have even went up, you know, renting an RV slot, the actual RV itself, the tow vehicle, I would say also housing and renting apartments and houses and rooms has also went up. So there's a lot of numbers you got to kind of crunch, especially if you're looking to do travel as a way to make as most money as you can and keep your expenses as low as possible. That's also on the heels of, at least for the travel therapy sector, so think of your PTs, your OTs, your SLPs. Our pay has, we've seen a slight increase, I would say, of the median pay. We're closer around that 2000 a week, maybe a little bit over, uh, to where when we first started, we were closer to like 1600 And then if you got a 2000 you were pretty excited. Yeah. Um, so it has gone up, but I don't think it's kept up with the amount of inflation and housing cost. Now, nurses is a totally different thing. There's really skyrocketed and they're trying to keep that their weekly pay up. And one of the reasons why is because housing costs cost have went up. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how one thing can totally change everything else. Just the whole economy has changed and pay rates have changed and housing has changed. It's all kind of from COVID happening and all of the different, you know, rural changes that happened there. And it's really changed the the layout. It's changed it. And that's why today we want to address, is RVing still worth it for travel therapists? Because so much has changed around it, we have to reevaluate and say, is there still a good reason to be an RVer or should you just try to look to rent? Mm -hmm. And so we just want to bring up both of those. We're going to go through pros and cons. And then, but, but here at the beginning, I wanted to bring up that costs are up in like all mm -hmm. industries. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's a lot to evaluate. So we kind of wanted to look back um, on and on our younger selves and give our younger selves advice. So I said we did buy an RV. If you don't know what we bought, we bought a 1994 motorhome. So it was a Fleetwood Bounder. Is that right? It had some water damage and, you know, it's an old piece of machinery. So the brakes probably weren't the best. Other things weren't the best. And then we redid the whole inside. And we did that because that's what we could afford in school. And we wanted to be in the RV living community. We wanted to try it out. Looking back on it the other day, 
we were saying, you know, would we have recommended that for ourselves? And we have a couple changes that I think we would make. Right. When we were looking to enter the RV lifestyle while also entering into the travel lifestyle, we had no money. We were we were just getting down with graduate school. We had a little bit of cash. And so we were really looking at RVs that we liked, but we couldn't afford an RV and then buy a truck or a vehicle to tow it at the time. And we didn't really want to finance anything because we really wanted to work towards paying off some of our student loans traveling. So what our little bit of cash could buy was <laughs> an motorhome that was older than us Yep. at the time. Well, still is. And um, it had water damage in it. It was not in good condition, but it did run. So this one we could drive. And we bought it. We renovated it. We have a whole like playlist of renovation <laughs> videos. That's some of our most popular videos on our YouTube channel, which is hilarious. They're so bad. They're so bad. That was when we were filming on um, my, my phone. phone. But we renovated it we did it and we set out and um we took it across the country yeah we went to montana arizona yep we took it to montana took it to arizona through the desert like 115 degree heat we had an episode where all the power went out while we were going down mount rushmore ryan was just yeah all the power steering went out Um, muscling it over to a parking lot hairpin turns i barely i barely got over i was thankful that there was a little spot that i could pull over and the emergency brake caught me um so just crazy stuff with this rv so looking back on it you think you brought up that you think you would not advise our younger selves to do it again yeah i think my advice shocked because it worked out for us and we had a great time my advice for solo travelers so if we were solo travelers so not traveling together, I would say rent a room. That's the cheapest thing to do. There's less maintenance. You don't have to worry about anything. You just have you one bag, one one suitcase of stuff, and you just go rent a room. You know, you're going to be out exploring anyways. You're probably not going to cook that much. So you don't need much space. You just need a place to sleep, and that'll be the cheapest for you. So you can really bank in that travel stipend and put it towards you know, good use, investments, paying off student loans, that type of stuff. And if you still do want to like, if you're traveling by yourself and you still want to be able to go out to some national parks, like that was one of our big main goals. Like there are other ways to do that quickly. So like while we were traveling, we got a rooftop tent. That would be a really good way to like not have to buy a whole entire camper and still be able to like have a quicker setup. And right. Simply car camping, yeah. tent camping. If you're into camping, <laughs> if not, then don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you don't need a whole RV because I think that's another thing we thought is when we bought the RV, I thought that, you know, every weekend we were going to take drive this big RV out and explore. Mm-hmm. And we did that one weekend and we figured out, well, we can't do this, mostly because there was so much to like pack down. When you're living in something full time, you really spread out. There's things everywhere. And then at the end of the work week to try to get it all together so you can drive this thing, it was just way too much for a little weekend getaway. Well, and that's the other thing. That's what you ended up kind of saying you would have suggested to us to do is instead of buying a big RV or buying Big Betty, if we wanted to travel together, buy like a small camper, one that's dependable, one that is small, less space than you think you need. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, and then a, a good tow vehicle that doesn't have to be like a large truck. So it's going to be easier to get because it's not so much money. Right. Yeah. If you are a couple or you're traveling with a friend, you guys are going to stay together. The most financially savvy route while still RVing would be finding a small enough RV that an SUV could pull. Mm -hmm. SUVs are still going to cost you a little bit. I'm not saying buy brand new, but you can buy one used, but they're going to be cheaper most often than a truck, but you want to check your tow rating. And then you got to have an RV that's light enough that 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 SUV can safely pull it. Mm -hmm. But there are SUVs and small campers out there. A lot of times, I think people get overwhelmed with that they're going to be living full time in this RV. But again, it goes back to that, what I was telling the solo travelers, you're going to be working majority of the time, you're going to be out exploring. Really, you need a place to lay your head and maybe relax a little bit. And it doesn't take much space to do that. We call Big Betty big, but she really wasn't that big. We didn't have slides or anything. And a majority of the time, we were outside hanging out. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And so really, you just need a space with a nice bed, maybe a little place where you can do a little bit of cooking. And so a small RV would meet that. So I would say advice to us as it's a young what couple, you would have done. I would have said, look for a SUV and look for a small camper. And then um, you could still even take that small camper because it'd be easier to travel on the weekends right. if you really if you really wanted to. Yeah, um, that was one of the benefits you thought we would have of having a smaller camper is that, okay, you can actually move it a bit easier on the weekends. So when you do want to go see all these cool places, we had to come up with the extra solution of car camping or rooftop tent camping because... Big Betty was too big to move and it was too much of a hassle to break down every single weekend and she was slow and not super reliable. So having something smaller might help you be able to just go do those things really quickly, have less packing to do and have more rejuvenating weekends because when you are going to travel on the weekends, it can get really tiring, Mm -hmm. even though it's worth it. I think there are a lot of pros to kind of getting a smaller rig situation like that. Right. And I think... um the stress of towing is a lot less when there's not such a huge thing pulling behind your vehicle. And then also, I would also give advice to my younger self of buy something a little bit more reliable. Yeah. So an RV that's <laughs> older than you and, you know, built in the 90s, it wasn't that reliable or it didn't like- feel it didn't feel that reliable. There wasn't as many safety mechanisms. We didn't really want to take it out on the weekends also because I would hate to be somewhere two hours away even or even further and then our home break down. And then what do we do? Come back Monday. We have no place to stay. We have to go to work. So that was always a, a, worry, a worry to me. And same thing if you're going to be towing like a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, you know, if you're... Tr- if you're towing it somewhere to camp during the weekend and your truck breaks down, well, then, you know, you got a big mess on your hands. I would also advise buy something a little bit more reliable. So that, so for, for me, back then, I was really pinching pennies. I, I still say, pinch that pennies. That advice is so contrary to everything in you. Like, it's really shown that you are older now. And yeah. you're looking back with it's a worth, little bit. It's worth, <laughs> it's worth paying up a little bit. So, yeah, I would, I was, I mean... What better way to show that I was pinching pennies that I bought a 26-year-old RV and said, hey, we're going to do all the work and renovate it to make it livable, and then we're going to drive this across the country. So I would tell myself, buy something a little more reliable so that, that SUV or truck or, or whatever you get, the camper, you know, maybe spend a little bit more money. I would even consider, and at the time, I would n- never finance anything. I would maybe reasonably finance something knowing that, I'm going to make a lot more money within the next few years. <laughs> a lot more money than your zero dollar salary as a student. Right. And <laughs> and I can put a little bit towards that. And and entering into the RV life to me would be worth it to to do that and to safely do that. I don't think I realized that until I had kids. And then it wasn't just me <laughs> and poor Megan that I was putting in jeopardy. <laughs> it was it was it was our young kids, and so then I then I really thought, okay, we need to get something that's way more reliable than this old hunk of junk. That was a good realization. So we probably wouldn't buy Big Betty. Probably not, but it did work out. So it did work out. So the funny part is, is so the story is that you can my idea make with. Mistakes. <laughs> yeah, my idea with the RV, buy something with cash. We didn't have a payment, which was really, really great. If you don't have to have a payment, then I would choose to do that. We were able to travel in it. If we got to use it, then great. If we didn't, it wasn't costing us any money. We renovated it, so we put a little bit of money into it, so it was livable and something cute and nice, and it, it did turn out really good, and it was mm-hmm. a fun project to do. It was a it fun, was fun life experience. So we traveled in it for, for a little while. That got our renovation cost uh, paid for itself. And then there was a few contracts where we, we couldn't use it because of weather and where we were, and they just didn't have any RV slots available. Then once we got home and we decided to sell it, we were able to, because the market, we just timed it right. Uh, we didn't time it right. It was just we got lucky. And we actually ended up selling it for a profit, which is which is awesome. It worked out for us. I don't know if it, if we did it 10 more times. I don't know if that it would work out like it did. Yeah. Um, but it did. Pretty crazy. Feels like a different chapter of life. Right. And so, now Big Betty's gone. Big Betty's gone. We did sell her. We got a new RV. The day that Big Betty drove away was a sad day. And we weren't even like together watching her go away because I was chasing Reagan around the house and Ryan was talking with the seller or buyers. And 
It was sad. She it, started driving down the road and we were like searching for each other through the house with tears in her eyes. It was sad. We have a lot of very good memories, Megan and I, in that RV. One, blood, sweat, and tears just renovating the whole thing and then getting to actually live in it and explore probably two of the most amazing contracts we've ever been on. So that was our home during mm -hmm. it. Um, so a lot of good memories. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I do think a big reason why we got we did end up going with the penny pinching direction is because we wanted to make the most use of our money as travelers. And so I know a lot of people enter into that and to travel with that mindset. And so that is something you can try to carry into if you take if you were to take our advice of go ahead and find something reliable and maybe finance something, you can still consider trying to make, you know, the smartest decision um, with your finances in that case, because our whole thought was we want to try and get the cheapest housing as, as we possibly can as a traveler. And sometimes in the RVing situation, you can do it the way we do and get pretty cheap housing, or you can do it with really, really expensive vehicles and campers. You can find the whole spectrum. So, you know, maybe just right. finding somewhere in the middle there there's would have been a little bit smarter. There's somewhere in the middle that would be better. I'm not saying go out and buy a brand new RV. I think there's plenty of used RVs on the market because there's a lot of people who buy an RV to camp during the summer over the weekend. They're weekend warriors. They use it maybe once or twice that first or second year of that summer. And then they don't ever use it. And the next thing you know, it's sitting in their storage lot. And they're like, you know, we don't actually use this RV. It's brand new, but maybe it's like three, four years old. That's like seems to be a really good sweet spot to then go buy a used RV in that range, that three to five year old RV. You have a, it's newer. It's not 25 years old. It's a little bit more dependable. There's a little more newer safety bells and whistles. So that might be a really good place to be. And then same thing with a tow vehicle, a truck or an, or an SUV. You can go buy a used vehicle as long as it's dependable. You have the Carfax. We've always bought used vehicles. You don't have to go out and buy something brand new. You just need something that can safely tow it and is somewhat dependable. And so there is a kind of a nice in the mm -hmm. middle place there. So let's move on to kind of just reviewing some of the pros and cons. Right, to really see if RVing still worth RVing. it yeah. now. We'll start with the cons so we can end on the yeah, pros. Yeah, let's end on the pros. <laughs> so the cons, I think the most obvious one is the initial investment. We've been talking about it a little bit, but that initial investment can be a wide range. It could be as low like us where we spent barely under 10 grand for everything, or it can be really expensive if you have go out and buy a brand new RV for 30,000, you go out and buy you a brand new truck for 40, 50,000, you can see how quickly that can add up and you'll be financing and have really large payments initially. Now that's brand new stuff. Again, I think there's a middle ground where you can buy used. Uh, I think you can get a used RV anywhere from 10 to 25,000. I think you can get a an SUV for 10 to 30,000 you know, or a truck to, to pull the RV. But still, that's a nice, large initial investment, which can be very overwhelming, especially if you're not sure if travel's a thing for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true, especially if you haven't tried it out yet. And, you know, you can always hop into those RV stuff later as well. If, you've, if you think that you're going to be doing travel for more than a couple years, um, then definitely I think it makes sense, but you might not know that yet. So you could go do your first contract and get it figured out. Right. You could definitely take a contract or two to see, do I even like travel? There's going to be a lot of change anyway. So to add RVing on top of that might be a little too much. Now, if you're set on travel, you're set on the RV lifestyle like we were, um, then just know that that initial investment, you know, you might have to travel for two to three years to really kind of break even, hmm. um, depending on what your initial investment is, you know, and everyone's case is going to be a little different. Um, but that's probably a good good framework, about two or three years of traveling to to really kind of make it worth your while. So th think, your think about that, worth your money. Yeah. Another con to the RV life is the maintenance. So that means you may be maintaining, well, you'll be, you will be maintaining tires 
You could also be maintaining multiple engines if you decide to go with a motorhome. And then you also have to have vehicles to drive for work. Um, you know, just. Oh, yeah. A lot of maintenance. Think about all the tires. So if you have a travel trailer, if you have a motorhome, you're going to have to maintain tires on that, maintain tires on your normal vehicle. You're and going maintain to. maintain your RV kind of like a home in you, a sense, you know? You, yeah. It's like a little bit of home ownership. So I always tell mm -hmm. people if you're going to own an RV, you better be a little bit handy. Or you better be able you better be able to watch YouTube well and learn from right. other people who are handy because you're taking your home down the road, you know, sixty five miles per hour. It's like a major earthquake every time you move that thing. And so when you go park it, a lot of things come loose. You will have leaks. You know, even if you have a brand new RV, there's always some issues. So you got to be a little bit handy to live the RV lifestyle. Yeah. Um, other cons is there is a learning curve to being in an to being an RV person <laughs> because there are some different systems and some different power you know situations that uh, made no sense to me before I had any exposure to it. So right, black tanks, yeah. gray tanks, sewage, water hookups, electric. Uh, there's it's it is a learning curve. Again, YouTube will be your best friend to help you with that learning curve. Uh, but sometimes that learning car, that learning curve on top of starting new job every three months uh, can be very, very overwhelming. I was thinking about this one. Your family never owned an RV. Well, you had a pop-up you, you took pop out occasionally. Yeah. My family never owned an RV. And so we kind of- We figured it out. We kind of figured it out. We kind of headed in with not much RV experience. Yeah. And once you figure it out, it is not as mystifying as <laughs> it seemed to me when we first started. You know, you kind of get a system down. But having somebody who can train you or um, a YouTube trainer is helpful. Right. A family member that maybe RVs, you know, would would, would give you some good advice. Uh, there's plenty of books in, in YouTube out there, so you'll be fine. But there is a learning curve, and we would be remiss not to mention that. The other thing is, is that it's not always cheaper to RV. So depending on where you want to travel, depending on the RV slot, and so uh, like the RV park, where you're going to actually park your RV to get all your full hookups, the rent to stay there, you know, might not be that much cheaper. It might still be close to $1,000 or more to rent a space. And if you compare that to maybe housing costs of around that or a little bit more, you know, it Depending on where you go, it might not always be cheaper. Now, there might be some places like we went to Arizona or if you're in a little bit more rural area, you know, our rent was closer to $500, which is a whole lot cheaper than we could get, um, you know, renting a home or renting an apartment anywhere else. And so it varies greatly depending on where you travel to and the cost of living in that area. Mm -hmm. um, another con is just the <laughs> anxiety of traveling can be a little bit higher. So getting to your next contract location is always a process. Um, but when you have, you know, your home coming down the road with you, there's a little bit more to think about. That's also kind of part of the learning curve, but it can just make the stress of getting there a little bit higher, even if you don't really have anything to worry about. Like now we do have a new rig that is more dependable. We have a good vehicle that can pull it very easily. And there's still just a little bit of, you know, concern because you want things to go well. So, right. Especially if you've never towed before, um, that it can be overwhelming. Like, like our new RV is 38 foot long. It's a huge travel trailer. And so even though I've towed quite a bit now, I feel pretty comfortable and all our setup is like set perfect. There's still a little bit of anxiety of like I'm <laughs> moving our whole home down the road and I don't want to mess it up. And so it's a lot different than just hopping in the car, you and your your significant other and going on a road trip with your bags packed. Mm -hmm. And so it can add a little bit of stress. Another con is RVing is very weather dependent. So you can't go to Alaska in the winter with your RV. I mean, you can, but it will be very, very tough to RV in the winter. <laughs> and so 
that can be a pro and a con. What's great about RVing is you can move your home wherever you want. So if you want to go down south for the winter anyway, that's what most people do. Uh, but we've had a few times, like we had a Wisconsin contract where we were going to get there too early and no RV parks were open that early in the spring. We had to wait till summer to be able to use our RV. Um, another thing would be RV park availability. So when we went out to Washington near Seattle, they have RV parks there, but there was nothing available. We called, I don't know how many RV parks, and they just said they were full. And so then we're kind of stuck. Do we want to still take this contract or do we now have to find a different job to where we can live in our RV? So that can kind of handcuff you a little bit. And then lastly, if you are traveling with somebody, um, you may have to drive separately. And you might be doing this anyway if you don't have an RV. It could be the same. But usually with an RV, that's a situation if you need to um, commute vehicles. So for us, Ryan and I are always driving separately when we're going to a new job. Um, and that's just what you got to do. Okay. Some of the pros, let's, <laughs> let's uh, get a little positive. <laughs> we're definitely RVing people, but uh, we're going to be very honest with the cons. But now let's introduce the pros. And I think the first one is really our biggest pro for RVing is that you can take your home wherever you go, no matter which state you're going to work in. No matter what contract you go to, you can take your home with you and that home environment stays the same. And that is so, so ideal, especially for a couple, but even more ideal if you have kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of our primary concerns with travel with children is all of the change and not being able to have an organized space where, you know, if somebody is staying home with them, where you can parent how you want to and help your children learn and all that stuff. So having a space that we can organize, that's familiar for the kids where they feel a sense of safety and a sense of home, um, I think is really valuable. And I think that's why we totally choose right. the RB life. With, with so much change going on of us in a new area every three months, it's hard to provide some stability for kids or even for ourselves and so the fact that we can provide at least one thing of stability, which is our home environment, no matter where we're at, we're going to have the same home, you're going to sleep in the same bed, all of our stuff's going to be perfectly organized exactly where you want, the school stuff's here, you know, you're... <laughs> when it's clean. When it's clean. <laughs> um, that is one big, big pro for RVing. We've done two contracts of renting a whole home with a kid, with our young... Our, our oldest, Reagan, and um, she did great. But again, we felt uncomfortable necessarily in the home because we it wasn't our home. We couldn't organize it how we want. You know, you couldn't set up the play space how you want for Reagan. I'm sure Reagan was a little bit confused on, is this home? Is this not home? Hopefully with our new RV, when we take it out on that first contract, we can you know, give them a space that they they, they know this is home. And then we also have our sticks and bricks home. Yeah. Another pro is that you can have cheaper options when you are for overnight stays when you're traveling to your new contract. So sometimes you are traveling multiple days to a new contract if that's what you choose to do. And we did this often when we were traveling in Big Betty and it was so nice to have free stays. So we would just pull into like Cracker Barrels or truck stops mm -hmm. Walmart. and sleep. And it was great because it saved us a lot of money and it helped us kind of keep a little bit more of that um, reimbursement that you get for your travel expenses in our pocket. So, Or even with our new RV coming back to Missouri, we it took us two nights and we, we booked an RV park, you know, and it was really nice to have our own beds, to be able to just quickly pull off the road, hook up, have all these amenities. It wasn't in a hotel with kids. And so that that really is really nice, especially if, and this is another pro, if you're going to be taking extended time off between your assignments, this gives you an affordable housing option. So instead of having to pay for an Airbnb or a hotel while you do your extended stay trip, whether it's to a national park or, or seeing a city or whatever, if you have your home RV with you, you just take it with you and you get an RV park, it usually it comes out cheaper that way and you can travel a little slower, which is what we like. I think another pro 
and uh, this goes along with with traveling with your home is not only do you get to bring your home with you, but you bring your toilet and you bring your kitchen with you on the road. Which is actually kind of huge because you can eat a little bit better on the road. You can get so tired of all that fast food. Then bathroom stops are, can just be quick and easy. Yeah. Who wants to go poop in a Love's <laughs> gas station, public gas station? Not me. Or, or your own toilet and your own safety of your home. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a huge pro. <laughs> um, another nice pro is that the whole packing process to get to your next contract um, can be a lot easier. So yes, you still do have to pack up and make sure things are secure, but you're not um, packing up an entire house into luggage and bags and um, storage bins. You're just quickly securing things down and hitting the road. And that is really nice. Right. Yeah, that that is really nice. It was such a nightmare to pack down two homes when we did these last few contracts with kids because we had so much stuff throughout that home. Yeah. And we (laughs) stuffed those vehicles and we really, we really packed as light as we could. Um, But still, once you're there for three months, you're going to spread out in that home. And so with the RV, what we really liked about it was we could spread out in the RV, but it was all there. We just shut the door, we hooked up the truck and we could go. And so that is a pro. I would say the last pro is RVing can be cheaper. And what I mean by that is on a month-to-month basis, renting an RV slot can be closer to that $500 range. Mm -hmm. It can be up there towards the $1,000 too. It just depends on where you are. While it it can be more expensive to RV, it can also be cheaper. It just depends how diligent you are, how well you look for those spaces, and then how big that first initial investment was. So to wrap up our thoughts about traveling in an RV, if we think it's worth it, we kind of have two separate answers. So for somebody who is traveling on their own, or maybe even traveling as a couple without children, might not be worth it. It might not be worth it. I would say if you're a solo traveler, if you financially want to get ahead, probably not worth it. I (laughs) would go rent a room, keep your expenses low, make that moolah, put it to good use, go have fun. Don't worry about the maintenance of an RV. I would probably say RVing is not worth it at this point. Yeah. Now, when you become a couple, it might be more worth it because you want a space that you can create a home together and that you can bring with you. But still, it might not be quite Mm -hmm. worth it for all travelers, especially if you're unsure if travel is something you want to do. Right. Especially if you're just trying it out and you're not committed to it for at least a year to two years. Yeah, I would say two or three. Yeah, getting into all the things that you have to deal with, with ownership and maintenance and, you know, just learning, you know, might not be worth it. Now, if you're a traveler like us and you're going to be traveling with a family, or maybe you're a couple and you know the travel lifestyle is for you and you're going to be traveling for the next three years, then RVing is totally worth it. There's a lot of awesome pros. RVing is just fun in general, in our opinion, and being able to bring your home with you is pretty amazing. So we would say it's worth it. Worth it for some, not worth it for others. You kind of got to look at your own situation and figure out that for yourself. And we think it's worth it for us right now, but we have not hit the road with two babies yet. So yeah, not with two babies. And, you know, just update you on what the reality of it is like with two kids. Um, But I think we will like it. We have taken the RV out for multiple trips. We did a huge Texas trip where we went to the different national parks with our new RV, and that went well. It was us two, Reagan. We hadn't had Lainey yet, and then we actually brought Megan's brother, Tim, with us, Mm -hmm. and so that was a lot of fun, and and that RV worked out well for that trip, Uh, but again, we haven't traveled with two babies. Our RV is set up perfect for the situation to give us the best results that we can. We have a large bunk room for the girls. And so we'll keep you guys updated on how the RV lifestyle works for this family. Well, real quick, before we wrap up this episode, we do want to say if you need some recruiter recommendations as a traveler and you want to hit the road, go ahead and send us an email at Ryan and Megan O'Rear at gmail.com um, to go ahead and ask us for those recommendations, or I believe we've got a form down in the description that you can fill out. Yep. We have an easy link down in the description. Just click that, fill out the form and we'll get you connected. All right. The last segment. What's been good? What's What's been been good? What's been poopy? So I'll ask you, what's been poopy, Megan? What has been poopy? Um, 
Africanized bees has been poopy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have had some stinging insect issues here at this house, and we got we got um, home ownership people. Let me tell you, we got they did our, not prepare you for this. We got our yellow jacket infestation fixed, and then this week I've been out with the girls playing on the deck and in the front of the house, and we're getting attacked by bees. And uh, anyway, some of them were dead in one of Ryan's play, Ryan's, <laughs> you're playing in the back, <laughs> one of Reagan's play areas, and Ryan took a picture of them on Google Lens, and it said they were Africanized bees. And I was like, feeling a little dignified or vindicated or whatever vindicated, that word is. Yeah, I wasn't believing her. Yeah. She, she was, was talking like, about all these crazy why are insects. Why making a big deal about these bees? I was like, nope, the yellow jacket problem, the exterminator got here. It's no worries. I haven't been seeing I anything. I was like, they literally beeline for you and try to attack you. And, and they were legit. There was probably about four Africanized bees. And if you don't know, yeah. those are like really mean bees. Yeah, look up, look Wiki- up Wikipedia, look it up, Google it, uh, Africanized bees, but they're a, they're a form of bee that's highly, highly aggressive and known to chase people around. So hopefully yeah, we don't like, have a nest close. If you um, go underwater, they'll wait for you to like pop back up. Yeah. They're savage. They're legit. So, so that's definitely, I would say, poopy. Yeah, that's poopy. So what's been good? What's been good is... Lainey slept five hours straight last night, so we're Woo-hoo. we're moving up the sleep ladder here in this household. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. Ryan, what's been poopy? What's been poopy and other RV related news? My parents' RV has horrible water damage, and so they knew they had a leak. They possibly have had a leak before they even owned it, and the whole floor is just demolished it's we're gonna have to you're gonna be doing another rv rv reno yeah i'm gonna be doing another rv reno with my dad it's it's on the it's on the fence of like we could just take this to the junkyard or maybe we can salvage the floor it's that bad but we've ripped out a bunch of the the flooring it's just soaked and all the way down to basically the frame and the styrofoam insulation and so that was definitely poopy to find out because everything else about the RV is awesome, but the floor is really, really bad. So hopefully uh, we can get that back in working order. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch a lot of YouTube yeah. on how to do this. <laughs> YouTube University. Um, what's been good? So what's been good is I'm entering into kind of the fall wiffle ball season. If you don't know, I play competitive wiffle ball. I have two big tournaments these next two weekends that we'll be traveling for. I have an all-star game for my league here at home tomorrow. And so just a lot of fun nights and cool nights, hopefully to play some wiffle ball. And it's always fun to play with the guys. So that has been good or will be That's good. Fun. All right. Well, that is it for tonight's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned a little bit about RVing and until next time, See ya. ya.